Welcome back to this module on file I.O. In this part, we'll do a few exercises. For our first exercise, we'll process the CSV file that we saw earlier, which included the last name, first name, NUID, and GPA of students. We'll process it to prepare a Dean's List by reading it line by line and identifying all students with a GPA greater than or equal to 3.5. We'll output all these records, but we'll only include names instead of sensitive data such as the NUID or the actual GPA. Just to remind you, here's the data format. I've started a new file, but we can reuse a lot of what we did in a previous exercise. Now the key here is to actually process each line. By process, that means that we're going to take each one of these tokens that's delimited by a comma and process it. Last name, first name, NUID, and GPA. So to tokenize the line, we'll need to use strtoke. and tokenize it along a comma. This gives us the last name. If we did this again, it would then give us the first name, then the NUID, and then the GPA. So instead of calling these tokens, let's go ahead and call them what they are. Remember on subsequent calls, you pass in null to continue tokenizing the same string. Now let's design this iteratively, meaning that we're going to test to make sure that each one of these lines works before we move on to the rest of the program. And for the most part, it seems to work, but we've already identified a bug here. Remember that that first line is actually the headers. So we're going to want to skip that. Otherwise, it was tokenizing it correctly. and I can get rid of all those poor man debugging statements. Now we're going to want to dump this data, the first name and the last name, to a separate CSV file, but only if the GPA is greater than or equal to 3.5. So first of all, we're going to have to convert the GPA to an actual number that we can do a comparison on. Obviously we can't name them the same thing, So I'll rename the token. Now to do file output, I'm going to have to open up another file. Don't forget to close the file. Now, if this works, a brand new file, deanslist.csv, should be created in the same data directory. It should only include the Anthony Rizzo record. And it seems to work, except that we lost our headers from before. In the original CSV file, the first line denoted each one of the headers. We may want to keep that in our output. It's probably most appropriate to do that immediately after we open the file. Let's try again. It 
and it's changed our file. Observe that it overwrote our old data. This is one of the risks of opening up a file for writing. It will start overwriting all the previous data. Now let's go back and make sure that it works on more records. No need to recompile since we just changed the actual data file instead. Ah, we've got a bug. The bug was not apparent on our first run because we didn't have really good code coverage. We only had a test case that resulted in one record. We were forgetting to end the line on each record. Now we will need to recompile. and it looks like it works. For our second exercise, we'll write a program to crack some passwords. Typically in a system, passwords are not stored in plain text, but instead using some cryptographic hash function or procedure. For example, a hash function would map a plain text password that a user would typically enter, and then would derive a string of data such as this hexadecimal string. Unfortunately, it's common for users to use dictionary-derived words as passwords. Such passwords can easily be broken by performing a dictionary attack. If you have the resulting hash, all you need to do is run the hash function through a dictionary or a list of common passwords to try to find a match. If you do, you found their password. For this exercise, we'll try to break a password that somebody used a dictionary word for, which resulted in the following hash. The hash function used was SHA-256. In practice, however, you'd want to use a full PBK, DF2, or password-based key derivation function routine, or some other more sophisticated password hashing scheme, like bcrypt or script. For our purposes, we're simply trying to illustrate file I.O. So we'll open up a dictionary file, run through each dictionary word, hash the password, and see if it matches this password right here. Now to start, this is a SHA-256 implementation. It's quite complex, so don't worry about it. Instead, I've created another function that takes a password or message and produces a SHA-256 digest as a hexadecimal string. Here it is being demonstrated. We'll hash the password password, which is actually the most common password, and see what it produces. And there's the hashed password from before. All we need to do is pass a string and we get a string back. First of all, we'll need to include that header file so that we have access to that function. For now, we'll go ahead and hard code the hashed password that we want to crack. Now, we're going to want to open up a dictionary. Most systems include a dictionary already of common words. On my system, it's located at user share dict words. Now, we're going to want to open up this file and process it line by line, hashing each one of those dictionary words to see if it matches this hashed password. We'll open it up for reading. We'll do some basic error checking to make sure that we actually have that dictionary on the system. Now we'll want to do something very similar to what we've done before. 
by creating a buffer. and reading line by line. In this one, we don't want to ignore the first line. However, we will want to chomp out that end line character. Now we're going to want to hash that password. using the same function. Now, if this hash matches the hash that we're looking for, then we found the password, so we'll print it out. Now there's no need to go on with the rest of the file, so we'll simply exit. Then we'll set ourselves up for the next iteration. Now before we go on, we're going to observe that the hash here is a character string that's been dynamically allocated for us because it was returned from a function. If it had been a static string, it would not have been able to be returned from that function. So we're going to want to clean up after ourselves by freeing that string. Otherwise, there would have been a memory leak. Now, if we get through the entire dictionary file and no hashes match, that means our password cracking was unsuccessful. So I wanna know that too. And let's try this out. So far, so good and we were successful. The hash from before was created by hashing the word computer. To demonstrate that this is actually working, let's go ahead and change the hash slightly. Instead of C, it'll be zero. We went through the entire dictionary and nothing matched. In practice, password cracking like this is done on large scale using large computers and generating what are called rainbow tables. Pre-computed tables of hashes that then given a hash, you simply look up what produced that hash. This is why it's important to use good passwords that are not based on dictionary words, but also with respect to security, there are much better practices that you can use instead of just a raw SHA-256 hash. But that's beyond the scope of this exercise.